decided to finish my reading. Uh, so I've been reading uh, El Aleph by Jorge Luis Borges. And um, because I've been reading it in original Spanish and my Spanish is super rusty from disuse, it's taken me a bit longer than I would have liked, but near the end now, and I'm super pumped. And um, yeah, like I said, great, uh, great to be here. Great to be doing work, living life to the fullest. Well, I love the enthusiasm. That's fantastic. So life to the fullest, finishing some books. And you talked with me earlier about a, uh, a goal that you have for the next six months, and we'll get into that. However, you know, what we need to do is talk about what is that beautiful question that you get out of bed with maybe something along the lines of why is it this way in the world that you live your life as an attempt to better understand? Sure. Um, so for me, the most important question is, how can I help create contexts that inspire people to be the best version of themselves? Um, and I try to do this in a myriad of ways through my work uh, with individuals and with organizations too. But really the driving force is uh, to not just accept it is what it is, you know, to, to have a bit more ownership about uh, what we bring into the world and, and what we're about. So mindfulness, it sounds like the context you talked about. Tell me a little bit more about that context around that. Um, so it's mostly about, you know, giving people the right tools to accomplish what they want to accomplish while also removing the internal blockers that we unknowingly impose upon ourselves. Um, you know, it, when you ask people what holds you back, a lot of people tend to say, oh yeah, myself, like it's mostly me, you know, I tell myself I don't have time, I don't have energy. And the truth is that though, though this is factual, it's not really the root cause of, of what's really going on. Um, so it's, it, it's more about, uh, yes, mindfulness, but a bit more, beyond that, uh, a, a bit more of an active awareness, uh, if you will. So being present and tools that help you get to those states where you can make better decision making? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What are some other end results that you've noticed in, in your process for people? Um, so there is better decision making. There's this... Um, a feeling of kind of widening one's perspective. So whereas it's far too easy to get like holds up in our own tunnel vision, um, to be able to sit with somebody and talk through kind of the things that are going on underneath the surface really helps uh, broaden that context and, and makes you more aware of how you want to be present in it and what you want to bring to it. That's really cool. That's really cool. So, all right. So we got some precursor time to, to spend with each other and everybody wasn't here to benefit from that. So can you tell us sort of the, uh, the origin story or a moment maybe going way back or, or recently where you, you realize this is, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um, my origin story is kind of interesting. Well, I don't want to preemptively call it interesting. It, it's it's a bit um, non-linear, shall we call it? Um, so when I was in high school, I read Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. And if you haven't read it, it's a really short, but um, very kind of um, disturbing, but also moving short story about the disillusionment of the modern workforce. And I sat there in my English class reading that thinking, okay, I know what I don't want. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm just some replaceable cog in a giant dysfunctional wheel. And what I do doesn't make a difference on things. You know, I, I, I knew that I wanted it to be about more than a paycheck. I wanted it to be about, you know, something outside of myself. So uh, my background originally was um, I wanted to go into medicine. 
And I decided after some really careful cost and benefit analysis that I didn't want to do that. Um, and once I decided I didn't want to do that, the question became, well, okay, well, what do I want to do instead? Um, and I was just like flipping through some like just job descriptions on on one afternoon. And I remember coming across something um, in a job spec and it just said systems thinking. And I'm like, what the hell is systems thinking? It's just, just more like corporate jargon nonsense. So I looked it up and a lot of the stuff that systems thinking talks about are you know recurring dynamics that we see in uh, many different contexts. And it was something that I had come to appreciate through my work with you know, my psychology background, my love for biochemistry. So it, it just felt like, you know, the shoe fit, basically. And then it was like, okay, well, how can I really leverage this, this different way of looking at the world really um, in, into something powerful that can impact a lot of different people um, and organizations. So that's kind of where it all started. Um, started. Uh, and it's just been pretty much going since then. Well, that's really cool. So what was it, you know, because I love the idea of systems thinking, if we can, uh, my wife says, hey, Brian, you just figure out the most efficient way to get to some from point A to point B. Um, it, you're nodding your head there. So tell people, <laughs> you, you know, from your own perspective, you know, maybe what system thinking is done for you or how you naturally, you talked about the shoe just fitting there. So so how is that uh, just a natural transition for you or what does that mean to you? So for, for me, I always found uh, kind of like binaries very troublesome, you know, is, is not. And I, I think that though they have their place for me, it was like, okay, well, you look at the parts of, so I, I guess the most problematic thing for me just looking around was how everyone thought that like, okay, there's big picture versus little detail or generalist versus specialist. Like we just created all of these uh, false dichotomies essentially. So for me, it's about realizing that um, there's the parts and there's the whole and there's not necessarily, you know, the sum of the parts is not exactly equal to the whole, there's some emergent properties, some things that become possible because of the interaction of these parts. And um, really recognizing and appreciating those inter interdependencies, I think is at the at the heart of systems thinking. Sure. Sure. I'm reminded of a couple of bar conversations and some napkins with some economists where you can clearly see that two plus two equals eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, napkin conversations. Miss those, don't we? <laughs> In the, yeah, yeah, that's it's a really powerful thing when you talk about intangibles, the things that make tax people just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew something could? <laughs> So you're, uh, yeah, so that, that's fantastic. And uh, when you talk about like um, uh, something flourishing, right, you don't know how many fruits a, a plant will bear. That's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Problem. And, and you know, just to kind of draw out the botany analogy a little bit, I think that, uh, you know, some people just plant orchids in the desert and wonder why it wilts. And it's like, well, it's not the orchid, it's where you're putting it. So it, it's, it, it's not only about, you know, the characteristic of the thing itself, but also uh, what kind of environment are you giving it and how are you cultivating it? And these are all things that, you know, seem really obvious on, on the surface of it, but in practice, we're so quick to just forget these really important caveats. Yeah, that's um, it's a really interesting thing when you think about binaries, and it feels like you put up a lot of filters as well as you know other people along those lines, and then you put a filter on the filter, and then a filter on the filter, and those kinds of things. And and mindfulness can be both a trap and a blessing. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. And so uh, for anybody out there, you know, if you have tools that you feel as though you aren't utilizing, let's say, imagine that you're getting angry or something along those lines. And, you know, if you need to go to the mountains 
to be able to decompress that, you're not going to be able to do that at work, right? You, unfortunately, they haven't invented Star Trek transporters who are like, guys, I'll be back. I need to I need to head over to a, a Buddhist monastery for lunch, and I'll be good after that. It's just, it's not available yet. So um, what are some of these tools, if you could describe them to us, that you feel help people with those filters, with uh, that, that trap of always being better, which is amazing. That path is absolutely incredible. But what are some of the... What are... What are some of the tools you've learned along the way? Sorry, I muted myself there. <laughs> no worries. Um, so there's a number of things. So um, TED Talks, love, love TED Talks. Um, there's actually a lot of things in my work that have been inspired by TED Talks that I heard. And it's just like, you know, a light bulb went off and you just kind of like run after it, right? So <laughs> that, that, that's, that was a bit of a mixed simile, but whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll run with it. It's okay. Um, and I think that one of the most important tools that I've had um, is one that I've developed myself, actually. Uh, it's called Enliven. And what it does is it uh, actively identifies the five categories of things that are holding you back from your goals. And then not only does it identify those things, but it helps you kind of codify what exactly you can do every single day to, to, to overcome that barrier. Um, and the thing that I really appreciate about Enliven is that whereas a lot of other self-improvement is like, oh yeah, maintain your streaks and like uh, hustle culture and, you know, all of these other things that like you mentioned, like it can be a double-edged sword with self-improvement and Liven is more like, okay, it's more important for you to go the distance. You know, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So it gives you a way to kind of um, understand how you can be kinder to yourself by giving you some tangible parameters that you can use to assess your progress along the way. Um, so just uh, in general, if we're speaking of tools, things that help you contextualize, things that help you monitor, that is what you want to be looking for. Mm. Would you be open to doing me right now? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Only oh. it takes it takes like an hour though, Brian. So we might want to like <laughs> do it sure. properly and then ha excited. have like a a trailer. <laughs> I'm getting excited because I was thinking about me and my partner or me and you or whatnot on that track. And, you know, sometimes I need to hand that baton off. Right. And sometimes, you know, I just need to wait for you to come around to the next lap. And that gives me some time to to do the things I need to do to be able to hit the next sprint and that marathon. And and more appropriately, let's say um, offset your weaknesses with my strengths, where we both hold accountability on strengths and not on our weaknesses. And there was a someone told me about a game uh, Pokemon recently. <laughs> And Pokemon is got this video game. I played this on Game Boy when I was a kid. And there's five trainers on this bridge. And when you get through all of them, you have to beat them back to back, right? You, you just keep going through it. And um, once you beat all of them, all the trainers say, we did our best and tomorrow we'll do better. It's like, hoo that's it, guys. Like Pokemon, <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, that's pretty much nailing it. You know, you can do, let me know if this resonates with you, is you can do better every single day but accept that what you did is the best you could do today. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there will be times where, you know, you you feel like you could have maybe done more. And I think in those times, especially, it's important to be like, look, I acknowledge the journey I'm on. And I think that it's really important to not just think of yourself as this like static monolith. You know, I think that a lot of, you know, personality testing and these kind of things encourage this idea that you are this kind of uh, unchanging blob that just changes in surface characteristics, but at the core is the same throughout life. And I think um, there's an element of like, okay, well, I am preparing myself for the future by planning for that future so that in the future, I can thank my past self for having my back, you know? So it's like realizing how you move through time and how you change through time also, I think is super, super important. And with that knowledge, it makes it easier to kind of be 
uh, patient with yourself, right? Because otherwise you have all of these adjectives and all of these definitions that you've kind of assigned to yourself over time or other people have assigned to you. Um, but there has to be this element of like, okay, well, that doesn't matter because I am on this journey of self-discovery and improvement and I'll do what I can. And that's what matters, right? It, it's, it's not about, you know, uh, holding yourself to these impossible standards. And as a recovering perfectionist, that is really difficult for me. <laughs> but I think ultimately you come to understand that we sometimes accidentally assign two different sets of standards, right? One for other people and one for ourselves. Um, but that within itself creates some sort of cognitive dissonance, which is something that enliven, you know, actively covers. And it's this idea that you have these two kind of contradictory beliefs and they're fighting it out amongst themselves. And there's no consistency then because you're constantly kind of ping-ponging back and forth between these two like things that are at odds with one another. Um, so yeah, I mean, it brings out this whole universe of ideas and, and discussion. So I could go on forever. So please do stop me. <laughs> I could tell. That's fantastic. I really hit a note there. That's <laughs> fantastic. And I, I'm glad that you did that. And that's where we are. We're in the eye of the hurricane now. For anybody who's been on uh, our uh, our podcast before, we've got an opportunity here with Osmara to just sort of poke around now. Right. I think we're sort of there. You know, we're talking about similar, similar things. And so you just get to bring in parallels and things that, you know, are interesting. And and we all know that you're focused on this one thing and there's a lot of extensions from that. Or there's been uh, a number of questions that you feel expand the topic that we could discuss here. So take it in direction, whichever direction you want, you know, toss some parallels in or pose some questions that we could discuss that you feel expand the topic you're working on. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. I'm curious to hear what you think it means to kind of create contexts for people to 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 help them, you know, uh, kind of hit on what it is that makes them excited and what it is that makes them, you know, joyous. Because that was the very first thing you asked me when we spoke the first time was, you know, what are you excited about today? So how do you think that manifests? in our, in our journey. So, so I have this clear in my mind. So how do we create context for people that that joy, that excitement can manifest in their lives? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Well, they, one, we all know we have to do it for ourselves and that's a really mm -hmm. cool thing. However, I have two kids and what helps them do what they do is stories. And that works for every age, right? A, a really great story. And so Alan Watts is a, is a really famous philosopher, uh, counterculture, 60s, kind of Zen Buddhism kind of guy. Um, and he talks, he, he gives a great metaphor one day. And again, this is the whole story. He says, you know, um, imagine a ship and a wake that it leaves. And we must realize in our lives that the wake does not drive the boat. And that wake like the Mona Lisa, we both stand there. It doesn't matter close to each other at different times, anything like that. Your feeling is going to be, and what you take from that is going to be different than what that I take from it. So story. And then the second thing is, is a good coach or, or people along those lines or someone who's helping you with the process listens a lot more than they talk. And they understand that coming back to the story, the answer must come from within because that wake, imagine that wake behind the boat that's not driving the boat. You are. You're driving your own boat. Your past doesn't have to. But it might not mean the past to people. That wake might have been something different. And so story allows for, it seems, a object that we can both relate to that we can get what we need from. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, beautiful answer to a beautiful question. <laughs> I know, I know. And see, that's why I'm so excited to work with you is because anything that we talk about is going to be, as we define it, quite beautiful. And you're one of the people on the podcast that is working on very similar overlapping, making lives better kind of things. And so we get to sort of geek out in a unique way because we have very similar, beautiful questions. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and that's where the fun is, right? To start from the same question and see just the incredible diversity of answers that come up, right? I think that when people think about questions, they usually think of like as a one-to-one relation. So each question has some sort of correct answer. But I think the fun comes from investigating how conceivably everything could be correct, right? And just figuring out how you want to unite all of that into one way of looking at the world or a nuanced way of looking at the world, I should say. You are fantastic. (laughs) You're just fantastic. And in the midst of all of those options with signal to noise theory and things where people find a lot of anxiety, you charge into those unknown spaces, you know, head up, heart open, eyes to the sunrise. And, you know, I heard from the end of, of Fievel Goes West, he's uh, the old dog who this little mouse has helped this old dog sheriff save the town, right? Whatever that was. And they're sitting there looking at the sunrise. I'm getting goosebumps just, just ramping up for this. And, and you know, he hands him a star, the little mouse, and the mouse says, I don't know, I'm just a little mouse. I, I'm not a sheriff. I'm not this thing. And he says, I don't know about that. A hero is oftentimes the last one to know and i don't really know what that is but i know if you ride head up heart open into that sunrise you might find that you're the hero you've been looking for whoa like whoa like that (laughs) that can be anything you want to make it in your life that can you can oh man the world is an incredible place and it took tools and process and iteration and the things you're working on to help make someone's life better right from the onset with that context that empowers them to be excited. Wow. Yeah. I love what you did. <laughs> Thank you. And likewise, I mean, you know, you, you're so inquisitive and, and articulate and you just approach everything with such an open mind and heart. And I really, truly find it so inspiring. Well, that's, I have a question for you now. So when it comes to a lot of different options, when it comes to a lot of people saying different things, that diversity seems beautiful to you. However, to others, it seems like chaos. It seems Mm -hmm. like uh, there's no truth. There's no one truth, you know, a Mm -hmm. tradition that I can respect, like Bible, Gita, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are fantastic moments of sanity that people have built right, that people can have from this tradition, from this orientation, from things like that. So how do you, how do you feel about chaos? Or what would you, what would you offer to people in all of the, these beautiful options, but to them, it might not be so, be as such? Uh, I love that you asked this question. So one of my favorite classes in college was um, a, a literary appreciation of chaos theory, right? So it was taught by a an economics professor who is very math heavy, but she was kind of applying the principles of chaos to literature. And the thing I found most fascinating about that class is you have this kind of singular unit, right? That iterated enough ways and in enough orientations creates something that looks completely mind bogglingly complex. But at the basis of it, it's really just one unit that's just spun and oriented in different ways. So for anyone who's kind of overwhelmed by the diversity of it, the plot twist is realizing that it's not as diverse as you think. You know, a lot of things are just uh, the same thing dressed up differently. And it's about recognizing those those parallels and and seeing how those dynamics reoccur and I think that that for me personally has helped overcome you know like diversity anxiety is realizing that actually the diversity is not as pronounced as you think it is Ooh, and I just like want to get you off this podcast and just talk to you myself. And I know everybody in our audience is feeling that way, right? I'm just like, let's let's just go talk about the, you know, our stuff now. And you know, you could really help me. And I could help you. And that's just that's just I, we can do so much for each other. And and I want that to be a great takeaway of what Asmara has really found in her life is that um, you'll hear a lot of people use the word abundance, but what is that when you're paying? You know, you can't pay your electric bill. You know what I mean? What what that can be is a is a deep connection between you and your wife, 
or your children or or you finally feeling some um, unconditional love which i'm telling you right now is is with your partners guys it's with your it's with your children it can be on any street corner jete like ballet through the streets on on corners i'm i'm getting goosebumps just even thinking about it like what you're saying is so cool that it's just a switch there nothing is new under the sun right it's we're yeah. just finding new ways to express that uh, oh man Absolutely. Love, marriage everything business oh wow same same stuff it hasn't changed right this morrow yeah yeah exactly and, and i think that you know sometimes people worry about thinking about things that way because they worry it's productive right to just say that like oh yeah it's just, you know the same thing in a different way but i think that it it speaks to the 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 beauty of of unity right and, and and i think that this is something that i love doing personally is just seeing that unity where other people see like chaos and diversity and disorder and just being like oh actually this is that thing you know like this is what's going on here um and yeah it, it, it's a beautiful thing it's a wonderful way to be yeah that's that's absolutely just incredible your energy is amazing being around you is amazing and so you know i really what i want to do here is um is really give some summary and some great takeaways for people on what we've discussed today because we have a lot of fun we love what we do we got here for specific reasons and then we decided hey this is really some value that i can have a lot of fun i can feel invigorated and keep going and and, and not feel burned out because i've aligned why i get out of bed and the beautiful questions I will align that with why I live my life. And that's an attempt to better understand these things, right? And then apply them. So what do you feel are some really great takeaways for people that they can either, you know, join you on this path in their own life or, or, you know, what are some things that you would really want people to walk away with? Um, I think more than anything else to to be mindful about the language of change, right? It, it is probably something that once you learn, that skill will serve you over and over and over again. And the way you understand change is by looking at what doesn't change actually and seeing how the stuff around it is kind of built to keep it that way. And that is how you understand kind of where you're starting from. Um, and more than anything, just understand that, you know, who you are today is not who you were yesterday and it's not who you're gonna be tomorrow. Um, and don't treat any of those people as strangers, right? So what you're doing today, future you will thank you for. Um, conversely, past you can also thank you for the stuff you're doing today, you know, like have pride in yourself and in your journey and in your truth above everything else. Wow, <laughs> that's really cool. And your process can be found where? Um, so you can uh, check out my website. It's ak1consulting.com. So it's A-K, the letters, and the number one, consulting.com. Cool. Cool. That sounds great. And then some other things, if you have a Twitter or Facebook, where can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. So I am on mostly LinkedIn. Um, I do have a Twitter account, but it's not really active, shall we say. So LinkedIn is the place to find me. Cool. Cool. And um, if anybody has questions for you in the audience, can they feel free to reach out to you and you know, things along those lines? Absolutely. Please do. I look forward to it. All right. So you guys have permission to tap into some amazing resources. And if there's, you know, one thing that you can do to help Esmara grow, I'd recommend, you know, this is something we learned from uh, beautiful questions this week, a tool on just how to be mindful is, um, let's say you're reaching out for investment or other things along those lines that can be contribution, time, money, ideas, or, or other things, different people have different things to invest. I want all founders, if you're listening today or crusaders or ho however you refer to yourself, whatever you call yourself, whatever itch you have and how you describe that, just remember somebody else has, they're a little kid. 
one day. They were a little kid and they've got dreams and they've got a limit on their time. They have family members who have a higher priority. And I walked into a manager's meeting one day, imagine that. And he said, I've got 10 things on my list. My bottom one is a 65, Brian. My top one is a 98 on 100. You better be able to score above a 65 on my list or I'm not going to give you any attention. I you know, I just want you to know that. You know, that's how I operate. And so figure out how somebody operates and you know, if you're going to reach out to them say, "Hey, you know, I've seen that you I see that you've really invested into these things and I really like that and I think you could add a lot of value." right? Or, or just be mindful of what you ask for from other people. Uh, clearly, this is a fantastic investment of my time. As far as someone who, you know, I worry that I'll ask for too much of her time, right? And those kinds of things. And so I see you nodding your head and you're too kind. And we're also these people that don't know how to say no, maybe a couple of times in our life or, or other things like that, uh, maybe helping a few too many people. And so just remember guys, you know, you're beautiful, you're incredible people. The fact that you're listening to this is incredible. And so just remember that that light needs to shine, but remember where you shine it into. Be mindful of, you know, if someone's ready for this, be mindful of what you're spending your energy on. And just remember, if you have children or friends, that's time that they can't spend with you. So every time you reach out, some what you wish for might come true. And if it's not aligned, if it's not mindful, you might get more than what you asked for or not what you asked for. So Thank you everyone for your time today. Orient on your beautiful questions. Just think about that. Like, why did I start or, or why am I here? Am I going to ever at any time betray those values? And let me tell you guys, if you keep that last line of defense in mind, there is nothing you can't accomplish. So keep on going, guys. Keep those beautiful questions in mind. As Mara, it's a treat to just work with you. Like, oh, it, Likewise. It, yeah, oh, I'm really excited. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. Yes. And, you know, for our YouTube audience, have a wonderful day.